Naomi Schiller, Associate Professor of Anthropology at Brooklyn College. So when New Yorkers were told to shelter in place at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, it became more obvious than ever that housing is foundational to our health, both as individuals and as a society. You can't shelter in place, as people were saying, without shelter. And not only is housing really vital to our health, housing is also a central part of creating a just, fair, democratic world. It's really impossible to participate in most of our central institutions without a safe and dignified place to live. So what is the United States doing to protect our basic human rights to housing? The Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, is a federal agency responsible for dealing with the housing needs in the United States through their programs and policies. And they also enforce the fair housing laws that make it illegal to discriminate against people when they're trying to rent, buy, or finance a house or an apartment. HUD's mission is to create quality, affordable homes for all. So how can it live up to this mission? And in particular, what can Secretary Marsha Fudge, the new Secretary of HUD, who was a longtime Congresswoman and the formal, former Congressional Black Caucus Chair, what can she do? There's a lot of work to do. The former Secretary of HUD, Ben Carson, worked hard to actually dismantle HUD. He asked for cuts to HUD's budget and he reduced staff by about 20%. So among Secretary Fudge's many challenges includes rebuilding and restoring capacity at HUD so that they can fulfill what I think should be their first three most urgent priorities. So let me highlight the three priorities for, for HUD. Priority one for Secretary Fudge, and this is the most immediate urgent priority, cancel rent and mortgage payments for the duration of the pandemic and extend nationwide eviction and foreclosure moratorium. Secretary Fudge needs to work to keep people in their homes. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, roughly one in five renters are behind on their rent and more than 10 million homeowners are behind on mortgage payments. So that means that millions of people right now are at risk of eviction and foreclosure. We need to prevent this massive financial avalanche that's coming our way by canceling rent and mortgage payments. And small landlords who are struggling because their tenants can't pay their rent should be able to apply, apply for help directly from the federal government. So the pressure should be on landlords, in other words, not on tenants to apply for help. Priority two. We need to address the ongoing housing crisis by putting more money into keeping people in their homes and by fun funding supportive housing. We know that on any given night in the United States, 580,000 people are homeless, and this was before the pandemic. We need to massively expand support to avoid evictions, not only during the pandemic, but moving forward. We should make rent assistant or right available to anyone who needs it, and we need to create more supportive housing. So supportive housing is housing that has, is permanent affordable housing that has on-site services like mental health, health care, counseling um, to serve the needs of formerly homeless people or people with chronic health, health issues, disabilities, etc. Priority three for Secretary Fudge, we need to repair, retrofit, and expand public housing. HUD should put massive funding into public housing to make it healthy, green, and sustainable. We've seen chronic neglect of our public housing stock in the United States, which has really led to substandard housing conditions for the more than 2 million people who live in public housing in the United States. Residents of public housing suffer from all kinds of health problems caused, caused by the mold, the lead, the indoor terrible indoor air quality and, and unsafe temperatures inside their homes. And meanwhile, public housing, like all housing, contributes huge levels of greenhouse gas emissions that, that are responsible for the climate emergency. So upgrades to public housing should be green and sustainable. Proponents call this the Green New Deal for, for public housing. In addition to repairing and retrofitting existing public housing, HUD should build new public housing. But in order to build new public housing, we need to repeal the Fair Cloth Amendment. 
The Fair Cough Amendment was a law that President Clinton signed, in, signed into law in 1999 that prohibits the construction of new public housing. So HUD can replace housing on a one-for-one -one basis, but it can't at the present moment create new public housing. So we need to repeal the Fair Cloth Amendment. Of course, there's so much other work to do. HUD should really get out of the business of favoring the preferences of homeowners. Studies show that the preferences of white homeowners, white homeowners in particular, drive HUD policy. And that five times more public funding flows every year to support home ownership, mostly for the wealthy, than to affordable rental housing. We need a long-term vision for reclaiming millions of apartments in the country to build new housing as regulated social housing. Social housing is housing that's protected from the sort of profit gouging of the private market. Mixed use, high quality, that's really the only kind of housing that's capable of solving the homelessness crisis and addressing the root causes of climate catastrophe. There are massive social movements on the ground every day working to demand these goals. In New York State, for example, the group Housing Justice for All has taken tremendous strides to fight for the basic right to housing. I hope Secretary Marsha Fudge will heed their call.